So super excited right now to introduce Tom French and Mike Byron. We have Tom French, of course, the UGC design lead. Good to see you, Tom. So good to have you back on of the course. show. Mike, you as well. It's always a pleasure. It's going to be fantastic. Up, and I think today is particularly exciting, right, because Forge is uh, only really a few days away. Yeah, yeah um, last, close. last month <laughs> when we uh, when we saw yeah, the finishing touches were getting put on, but today we're going to take uh, a little bit more of a closer look at Forge as well as the BTV maps that we have coming, which yeah. is pretty darn exciting. Yeah, it's super exciting. Yeah, I think so. It's going to be fantastic. I think the first thing we're going to look at is Entombed, uh, this map uh, coming in. This is going to be inspired by bur burial mounds, right? And built by Duquesne23. By yeah. the way, Duquesne 23's birthday today. Oh, so a happy, big, uh, happy birthday. Wow. That's right. Wow. Happy a birthday, big, Duquesne. big shout happy out birthday. to Duquesne 23, <laughs> awesome. Community Fortry, who helped uh, really d design the initial layout for this map here at 343 in the summer. Uh, fantastic that we can give him Forge news on his birthday. He's also been making demands, though. He's asking for his character oh, in oh Forge. He's very demanding. And, Every day on Twitter. The, today, I'm only allowing it because it's his birthday. Normally, I would <laughs> yell at him, but this is a map that he worked on at the 343 MP team, and you guys also collaborated on. Tell us a little bit about Entombed. Yeah, I mean, it was a really fun map. Uh, he did a great job kind of setting it up uh, originally, and then uh, we handed it off to our guys to really uh, just kind of take it the rest of the way. Adrian and uh, actually Max Grossman both worked on this one. Um, it's really cool. It's on our it's on our space themed map Parallax. Uh, you can see we have custom kind of one off rocks for mm -hmm. for the space theme to kind of give it that moon that moon feel. Um, we went uh, asymmetrical with this map mm -hmm. uh, so that it's not just all symmetrical maps. It, right. it has a lot of fun play. Also, since uh, the Spanker's coming out this month, uh, I did a little a little bit of uh, hand wringing and a little bit of trading here, and we uh -huh. got uh, we got the Spanker in the level along Sweet. with Forge. All right, so that yeah, that'll they'll be able to actually use that Spanker in Arena BT. Yes, they will be able to use awesome. the yeah. Spanker. I think a lot of people will be excited about that. Now, this is Antifreeze. This is coming from Warholic, uh, another amazing community forger. Um, this map inspired a little bit by Avalanche, right? Um, a pretty fantastic uh, map here. A little bit well. of everything. He yeah. kind of just went off on his own, and it, it's fantastic. He had a great time doing it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to jump into this. I think it has some neat vehicle routes around that bottom uh, throughout the course as well, and some power power weapons waiting for you up top, too. Yeah, I mean, what we liked about this map is it's really like an infantry-focused BTB map with just a little bit of vehicle gameplay. Right. This cool. central area really leads to a lot of really cool fighting and stuff. It's a really fun map. Yeah, absolutely. So that's going to be uh, Entombed and Anti-Free. Um, that are going to be coming with the Cartographer's Gift update, two new uh, BTB Forge maps that are coming. Uh, two of four maps that are coming also have Overgrowth and Battle of Noctis, which we're going to see later on in today's program. But let's get to the meat of today's show. Once again, thank you so much for joining us on Twitch and the Halo channel. You're about to take a look at Halo 5's Forge Tom, I think we're ready actually to take a look at Yeah, you made something special for us for yeah, the stream. Yeah, I, so I spent the past few days kind of just putting together a map to kind of demo everything. It's a mm -hmm. lot of the stuff that we talk about in the blog, but actually, you know, getting to see it live yeah. uh, would be really cool. So, yeah, I spent a bunch of time building that. So. Sweet. Awesome, man. I think some people might have uh, seen the Forge video that GameSpot just put up today, mm -hmm. which kind of showed off a lot of things. If people, people who were really looking through those menus, I think, found a lot of stuff, right? Brand yeah. new <laughs> controls, tools, fields, uh, so much goodness. I mentioned in the first part of the show that I'm not even going to try to explain it all because the feature set yeah. gets so deep. We don't actually even have time to kind of talk about everything. Right. I mean, really, we touched everything inside yeah. of Forge when right. we built this. So. Yeah, it's, I'm excited. So I think we're ready to go ahead and jump into Forge right now and take a look. You can kind of walk us through everything that's on the screen right now. Um, well, I suppose not everything, because that might yeah. take several hours. But yeah. some of the some of the stuff that people should be looking for in this brand new Forge. Okay. I mean, so we're, so this map I built is, uh, I mean, again, it's just kind of to show off stuff, but it's built on our Glacier canvas, which is one of our... Uh, our big three forge canvases that mm -hmm. we have, and it has there's three different times of days in here, and then additionally we have the other forge canvas we'd consider as a canvas as the breakout map, but it doesn't have the times of days. But it's really that one's really specific for building kind of breakout arenas. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I love this map. It's really big. It has a lot of different areas to work in. So what I wanted to start off with is kind of just showing like a lot of the core things that change. So we have a whole control helper, which you can see on the upper left that we put in to kind of take people that are new to Forge and also people that are like old Forge veterans to kind of walk yeah. them through how our new controls work and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we always had this kind of fluid movement in Forge, and so we really wanted to move that into all parts of our building rather than just kind of like locking onto objects and just single focused. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take this little piece of the map that I kind of worked on. So I kind of built a little base with some, some natural terrain and little punk rock snowman <laughs> right there. <laughs> with grenades I was going to ask, this yeah. guy's fantastic. Yeah, he's That's pretty really fun. Cool. So, um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of now, how would I take this and start to kind of dupe out the second half of the map? And so first thing I can do is I can just start selecting pieces. So I can just 
to hit the bumper to select a piece, the right bumper, and just keep selecting pieces, or I can hold it down and do what we call paint selection. So oh, now I can just keep awesome. holding down. We had this mentality with our controls where we wanted it to be like, if you think about typing, right? If you type correctly, you keep your hands in what they call the home position, right? Mm -hmm. And so this, my hands don't have to move off of the, the, the comfortable position that you play Halo. Yeah. So basically, I just selected everything in that map, which is fluidly editing things. And if I accidentally, like, you know, maybe I grab the trees and I don't want to dupe those, I can just tag, toggle it again, and it will turn it off so it's not selected. Hmm. Or I can hit the left bumper and basically drop everything. Mm -hmm. But so now I've got, like, the, my terrain selected here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group this. And so now it will behave essentially as one object. And so when I duplicate it, oops, I kind of shoved myself into the middle of it there. <laughs> fly up a little bit higher, so I'm out of the way. And so there are things even to make it feel like the old Halo, so like yeah, I can click on to an object and uh -huh. lock onto it and rotate the camera around, oh, nice. but, which is just to kind of make like the, the old initiated kind of feel comfortable inside of here. Mm -hmm. So now what we have is kind of modal-based uh, or shift-based kind of selection or movement mechanisms and stuff like that. So if I hold down my right trigger, I can now rotate it, and I have it on uh, rotational snaps of 90 degrees. Oops, I kind of did that in a very weird way. Let's flip that back over. Um, so if I flip it, it's harder to see from here. 180. There you go, 180. There we go. There we go. So now I flip this whole piece around 180. And you can see here that the terrain, the projection. Well, I was going to say, let's talk about that projected terrain. Because yeah. we've shown, I think, a little bit in the GameSpot video, and we kind of talked about it. Yeah. But I think this is the first time we can actually show see it. it yeah, right? yeah. The, the terrain is probably, the one, in my opinion, it's one of my favorite features it, that we have. Yeah, so I can like blend it in as I move around. And then I want to keep this up so it kind of matches wow. with the other piece that I built. But uh, yeah, so it just it, it samples the terrain under it. And I'll show you some of the other pieces, actually, from the other camera as I do the demo. So now I'd have like, you know, I've got a pretty cool, I connected those two sides of the map and I've got that pretty simply built. Mm. And then now we'll take like the base that I built. So I yeah. built this cool little base out of a lot of our, our primitive pieces and some of our structural pieces and accents. So I can just take that as well. I can duplicate that, and now I have a piece Jeez. of that as well. And, 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 and now your map we, is done. Can, yeah, <laughs> I mean, can we talk about how long that would have, t I mean, to do all of that, again, would literally require, in, in previous forges, a piece by piece. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Brutal. it was brutal. And like, we weren't a fan of that. We wanted to make everything kind of fluid and fast. So I flipped that around 180 degrees. And, and that is 100% symmetrical, right? Yep, that is 100% yeah. symmetrical. And then so I've got a precision. And you know, you can move it around pretty quickly by like boosting it around, mm -hmm. which is another way you can move. Or I can, you know, if I want to be really precise, I can move slow movements and stuff like that. So I'll just kind of line it up roughly to where I was. This, we're not gonna actually play this today, so I don't need to be perfect. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Now we've got a, a now, you know, base. now you have a map that's symmetrical. Yeah. <laughs> and then basically what you'd want to do from there is, okay, I can take this object, even though this is multiple objects combined together in one group, I can go to the object properties and treat it as if, you know, I can edit the properties as if I'm editing one object. So. We're going to go into the colors, and right now there's multiple colors to each of these. And so um, I'm going to flip this over to base two. And you oh. notice that ba wow. basically the whole base just went blue because the secondary colors were mapped to that. Right. So that's pretty cool. And then, so what this is what we call reference colors. And so this is the base reference colors for base two. And so what it can be is like, oh, my map, I'd like to make, uh, you know, I don't like this blue for our, my base two. So I can go to our, to our maps options, which is like, this is the stuff that gets stored out with the map setting. Yeah. So this is like how you can change your lighting theme. You can change the different types of fogs. You can change your clouds, the winds. Like, oh, there's so much like weird little details that we buried in here. Um, but then I go, oh, you know, let's change my base to reference color. Uh, I'd like that to be you know, a little bit darker. Kind of gives it a little more mood. Or you know what? I don't like the the wall color. So let's let's play with my walls <laughs> and find something that I like. And then. Maybe get my floors maybe a little bit different color. So I mean I didn't make a like a, a real noticeably cool change there. Mm -hmm. But again, I changed something quickly and then because they're all referenced, again, like it references over on this part of the map, and I can just change the map really mm -hmm. quickly. And, and if you wanted to have those on independent, right, you could yes. just change the reference yeah. colors. So yeah. yeah, I could just go through and actually individually assign each of the colors on them. And a lot of the objects have three different colors, which is kind of cool. So yeah. you can really personalize each piece. We, right. we tried to make it so that what? Almost every object that you can use in Forge uh, has the, the color selection to some extent. Yeah. Um, Even gloss. There's a gloss yeah. and matte values that we have on most of them as well. Mm -hmm. just, we just want to, yeah. again, just give personalization. Yeah. And, and the nice thing about the reference colors is when you have, I mean, we have, what, 120 colors now? Well, I mean, actually, here's a perfect <laughs> spot oh, here to we show go. you. So yeah, we have here. This is great. This is showing off. Like these are Oops. these are our color palette for Forge right That's now. Cool. We have all of these colors, and so it's really nice to be able to set a reference color uh, so that you can be like, I want my walls to always be this shade of gray or this right. beige, and then from there you never have to worry about 
fumbling through and trying to find that specific color every single time for yeah. every piece. You can just set it once and then have that as a reference color and kind of forget it and be like, oh. Set it and forget it. My exactly. Favorite. Set it and forget it. We should trademark that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, this is actually how I organized the colors in the game, is actually I just started placing blocks. I ha we had the 128 colors that we wanted to use, mm -hmm. and I just started to organize them to kind of make them have a flow. But I know it's kind of fun to just look at this kind of big palette of colors that you have at your disposal. Right. So, I don't know, Forge has never had that many options in it, so no, yeah, we'll I meet mean, that and move on. Absolutely, yeah. I think, uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, it sounds like we have, Jay, go ahead. We do have some Twitter questions, oh, okay. uh, internet questions, I should say, that are coming in. Um, that I think is actually, this first one is pretty fitting for what we're talking about right now. This is from Reddit user, The Real Kids Today. Uh, what gave the team ideas uh, for some of the new features that we've been seeing in Forge? There's, I mean, it came from a lot of places. I mean, we started a lot by kind of trolling forums mm -hmm. and, you know, talking to you guys, like, what do they want, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we really started our list with that. Um, Watched all the YouTubes. Yeah, lots of YouTubes. Um, and then, you know, put on my game designer brain and really just sat down and, like, I, I started the industry as, a, like, a tool programmer, and so right. I was really fascinated and kind of obsessed with making, like, really forward-facing tools. Mm -hmm. And so, like, how can we make it friendly? How can we make it fun? Mm -hmm. And just really started this big, giant blue sky document and then whittled that down to, like, what can we do in this time frame? that pushes Forge ahead, you right. know, and that's what we really aimed and focused on. Yeah, I think that first meeting that uh, I remember having with uh, with you guys and the team maybe two years ago, yeah, when you was first a long laid out, time ago. when you first <laughs> laid out, hey, here are all the pieces we want to do, and we want to redo everything, we were just like, oh, damn, this is, <laughs> this is, uh, is going to be new. Yeah, um, it, it was it was uh, pretty crazy back then to just think, like, all right, Blue Sky, what do you want to do, Tom? Yeah, and he's yeah. like, here's everything new. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, just speaking about pieces, I mean, that's kind of where we're actually at in the little demo I built here. So, um, you know, my first goals are really like kind of making the ultimate like building block palette. And right. so we have, I mean, these are just a couple of, this is like one of each type mm -hmm. of the primitives we have. So there's, you know, blocks and triangles and trapezoids. There's rings and different ra ratios of rings and, and, and cylinders and stuff like that. So these are really your kind of core building pieces. If you don't have an accent or a structure piece, you can always find something in here that fills your gaps. So that was kind of a good, those are good like simple building tools. Mm -hmm. And then that leads more to like our structural pieces. <laughs> wow. And this is just, again, this is just a small smattering of them. Like yeah. these are different kind of what we call accents that have a lot of different kind of kit bash ability. You can flip these around in all kinds of different directions and make different uses. Like this one I use all the time for walls, but you can use it for uh, just like a little bit of piece of a tower structure and just keep adding on to it and shoving mm -hmm. stuff into it. But there's a lot of different details in here from even just like just columns. We just build. We just built a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and then how many? What's the object count? I think the final object count was over seventeen hundred. Over seventeen hundred. Yep. And oh. count. And, and counting. probably counting. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily include like all the variants of like a warthog and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's pretty just. That's like the base level list. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, then there's like, I mean, we made bridge pieces instead of just making these blocks. We made specific bridges and different types of railing and covers that you can put on them. Or like we have um, different stairs and stuff like that. And like wedge pieces that if you use our new magnet system right here, you can just snap those on nice and Boom. easy. And wow. they're all systemically Oof. thought out and built that way. Or like the railings, you just snap them on and then you have your railings <laughs> kind of built <laughs> really so quick and thing. easy. And speaking of the magnets, this is some, this was one of the cool things about having the cartographers come out is... Uh, they started using the magnet system, which was more or less still the H two A one yeah. at that point, and uh, they they were really struggling with it yeah, just it with bad. our system. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> and so uh, Ben Walker, the the dev, he kind of went into his like little cave for two days and came out suddenly with this whole new smart magnet system that uh, kind of predictively shows you where it's going to be, and it doesn't snap until you let go, so you can make sure that you have it exactly where you want. And you want. can target you, like where you want it to you go. You can target which which points you snap it to. Right. Uh, we we kind of work to try and increase the precision on the object so that it doesn't have like weird miss snaps as much and all that. And it really helps with pieces like this. Like these are pieces, these new trim pieces that we came up with, which are just really cool little modular pieces where you can. Again, just kind of think about kit bashing them in different ways. Oops, I flipped that to 90 degrees. And then like, oh look, now I have a different kind of awning sure, or yeah, building yeah. structure. And they're, they're super simple to use. And I, I don't know, that was kind of a goal is how many different ways can we possibly use an object? Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and speaking of, I think maybe a good time to talk about FX, sound, and, yep. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's more. I mean, oh, wait, no, wait, there's like, more, pieces. Like, there's there's always always more, more. more. More pieces. Um, so yeah, so these are more natural pieces. So these are rocks from Alpine that we just like, didn't use. 
Um, and then there's the asteroid kind of palette down there. There's also different trees and things like that that we have. And mm -hmm. these are things that we'll just keep kind of adding and to we, along the way. Yeah, and we actually saw, I think, one of the first uses you, you showed me, which is really cool with those rock pieces, is actually building full tunnel systems, right? Yeah, you yes. can build all kinds of stuff. You can actually build then. structural systems yeah. with yep. those, yeah. And then so you can see, like, here's, so these are actually from Alpine, but we had this mentality of, like, any object, any map. Yeah. So even the Alpine pieces, which do the same projection mapping that from the from the alpine train sheet mm -hmm. you can use those in yep. glacier if you want to and sometimes we do mismatch them like in the shade if it's yeah. in, on alpine Quinn did that really cool thing really on cool. alpine where he added uh, different snow banks and and glacier terrain pieces to make it look like it was thawing in the spring so anywhere where there were shadows from rocks or buildings he actually laid out then um, more snow on top of right. it so it like added that layer of depth and kind of made it feel like a custom one off environment so yeah, and then now we're into like props, right? So we got some different animated props and we got some giant cargo containers with different variations of open, close, the door mm -hmm. is a different piece you can snap on. There's a vehicle size one that you can stick a warthog into if you actually wanted to. There's various exploding props and you can even change colors on these things, which is kind of cool. Like just, again, customize everything to make it personal and yours. So like I could make an exploding barrel that's black if All I right. wanted to, yep. right? Make it fit your level, different signage, uh, different interactive terminals and like even in we put some invisible objects in here like this is a switch you can hit for scripting yep. but like so if I drop but it's invisible in the game you don't see it right so it's just little things like that or like even adding it so that like the stuff that you, is invisible at runtime yeah when I drop in I don't see it Oops, that, it's kind of hard to that's, show here that's a, yeah this isn't the best way to show it. but uh, that is a really cool thing that uh, we came up with is um, we tried to make it so that when you went into Spartan mode to test things in Forge mm -hmm. um, all of the things that you wouldn't normally see in Slayer now automatically hide. So you don't have to worry about running around and seeing spawn points running and over those, all yeah. of the yeah. like named Cameras location and volumes and, and all of that stuff. It only shows you kind of what the output would be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's so rad. I was like, saw that object and I was like, I must steal that for Forge. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, vehicle props. TV screens, because you know you got to have lots of TV screens. And the TV the screens are cool too, because you could combine a TV screen, which you can then color to give it a color that would glow, and then you could, on top of that, add an invisible button, and yeah. then suddenly you could have them go up and interact with the TV to to do something in the sure. game. Yeah. Cool. Or even have a green screen on the TV, whatever it, it is. Yep. Right? Exactly. It gives a lot of options. I yeah. mean, there's even actually literally green yep. screens. Yep. We put chroma <laughs> screens. It's something that the you know the the uh, machinima, machinima community can really use, and they're they're actually even better than just green screens because if you want to have a a yellow screen or you have that option you can just change these to whatever you want like right. super versatile they're fun because you can actually fly through them um, so you can actually do like special effects and things like that mm -hmm. which is cool uh, even invisible blockers this is something that like this the community the has been special. begging yeah. for uh, yeah, he loves yeah, these yeah. things. Yeah, football community loves those <laughs> yeah. barriers. Um, and and again, they just they hide at runtime, but like you can see them when you're foraging, so they're super useful. Yep. Um, fun toys. There's the piggy. These, these guys were just introduced today, yep. I believe, officially. Timmy, yes. Timmy's um, been announced for a while. Olive is a new addition. What was he addition. named? I think today might have been the name. The day. Timmy, Timmy the whale. Timmy, I think publicly was named. Today. Yeah, we yeah. Yeah. we Timmy called him Timmy for. But we now show we can show off Olive. Finally, uh -huh. yeah. our, our and then she's actually part of lore, which makes me excited because <laughs> she's. I actually have a pig named Olive, and that's how she kind of came about. <laughs> and we love her a lot, so my kids are going to be excited that uh, Olive is now part of Halo Cannon. <laughs> um, Crane is another big one that I know the community guys have been wanting for a long time. And it was just something we stole from a map. And what's cool is this thing's all just modular. It's actually multiple pieces, mm -hmm. yep. so you can kind of you know kit bash and make it do whatever you want, which is right. rad. Yep. Um, we have even just glass. Like this is something that the cartographers really want a community. And then the cartographer, uh, cartographers didn't have it when we were here, but we've actually added color change yep. to it, which oh, is sweet. super cool. Yeah. Can, more personalization. You can tint the glass. You can make it more opaque, more like mm -hmm. less, uh, more transparent. Kind of have a lot of kind of one-off control. And on. you know, and more importantly, not one, but two, two cones. traffic cones. So right. we, we we definitely have improved for it with color change and color change. So yeah. <laughs> so not only does Two cones come. The cone emblem's also coming in yep. this update. So this <laughs> yes, is like a is. big update wow. for the cone. For the yeah. cone, the cone's really getting its own Halo history. Hashtag cone back. Yeah. yeah. Um, breakout pieces, all very modular. Like even the pieces to fit on the the hypotenuse of a. Of a I know it's a nerdy word, but like <laughs> it, we we made shield pieces so that they would snap perfectly. Again, mm -hmm. it's just really the best building system we could think of. Right. Um, Decals was another way to kind of personalize things. This is a small kind of sampling of them. We have a lot of different sizes and shapes, and I know they're really fun. They add a lot of personality. You to can just kind of put those flush against yeah. anything, and yeah. it's cool because they they eat the they eat the texture as uh, the texture behind it, so it makes it look like it's totally seamless. And then uh, I mean, even we didn't. I mean, again, we touched everything, so we even took like old things like the like the shield barriers and stuff before. So 
these, like, I, if I was on the, if you're on the blue team, you can walk through them, which is cool, you know, but the red ones, I can't walk through, but I can shoot it out. So, like, just having little gameplay features, I blow through the thing, okay, gotta blow through it. So now I can walk <laughs> through it, like, just adding little gameplay elements, or, right. like, the, uh, the the teleporters, like, how did you figure out which way you came out of them? So we added a little arrow to show you where they come out. Oh, and then so if I drop, awesome. boom, I can pop over to the other one. And you can see this is an invisible one. And you can see we use a lot of iconography. So the, they're, they're kind of clear and transparent. We call that ghosting. And that's an object that's not going to be there at runtime. So I can just, again, walk boom, and use those. And then you can hide them and do your own kind of special effects with them. Right. Or even like man cannons were another thing before. Oh, you used to have nice. to finick with, uh, kind of fiddle with them a lot. Yep. So we just made and them so. And they only had preset kind of yeah. like strong medium. And so these, you can actually, let me ungroup these real quick. Um, I could actually grab this and tune the different parameters to like control. Oops, let me pop out of there. So like how far does it go? Right, I can change the. And you get to shoot like, Yeah, oh, which is cool. So it's like sweet. Yep. Wow. a lot of I fun. I did not know about that. It's super cool. <laughs> and then even down to things, these are kind of hard to see, but like, um, like kill volumes and stuff. We put a lot of iconography on them so that they showed up really easily to right. see. Rather than just these big, big boxes that are kind of see-through. Yeah. 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 And so they kind of tell that each of them has a little bit of a story and colors to kind of give you some some idea of how. And quick it works. reference, right? Yeah. yeah. Like I think Pro Forgers right away will know yeah. exactly what. And, on, and on the building side for for those sort of volumes, uh, we did a really cool thing where. Uh, you can set to always show your volumes, show them when you trigger over them, or if you're not really caring about volumes right now, you can set it to always hide. So as you fly around, it won't turn right. them on and off as you're trying to build, yeah. to just right. give you more control over what you're doing. Sure, yeah, when you were at a Final Forge map, hovering over those barriers was... There's no reason to have that at that point, so right. you can you can turn that off if you want. Or you know, if you're laying your kill volumes out, you can turn them all on and see, like, oh, that whole space is my space. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so one of the other features that's kind of cool is so I, one of the things in Halo 4, every time you wanted to bake lighting, you know, you, it, every time you tapped down, it would do it. Generate lighting. So we yeah. changed it so actually if you tap down, you can just drop in. But if you hold it down, it will actually bake Generate the lighting. Full lighting. So yeah. that gives you kind of a little more freedom to just kind of test versus actually like building to make sure you're getting something pretty. Right, right. So um, let me get the lighting bake here to finish. There um, we go. Okay. So now I'll show you one of the enhancements we did to groups is this idea of welding. Yep. And so there's Timmy and Olive, and I have, I like, this is one of my favorite things to do is put uh, effects emitters yeah, coming we, we out. Saw, wait, we saw in this morning's video, yeah. too. Yeah. We love putting sparks on I do this pretty much out of everything. So, like, if I took Olive here and I made her physical, um, you see the effects emitters just pop out of her eyes. And if I went over, even though she was a group and I knock her down the hill, sorry, Olive, um, <laughs> the effects emitters would still be on the ground. And they, they, were, oh, they flew through the yeah. floor. Um, so they're right there. But like now we have this idea of welding. So I can take like Timmy here, and if I make him normal physics, oops, I got to put him to phase. If I weld him, and then I set him to normal physics, this is the welding thing that people are so excited about. If I do this, now when I knock Timmy down, you'll see the effects will follow him like it's right. to his it, eyes. It treats it all as one wow. object. So that's kind of cool, right? Oh, and certainly, yeah, yeah. I know, we can do it. That's something we'll just keep I enhancing think, as we yeah, can. Yeah, I mean, with some of the stuff you were showing us before release, even over the summer, was right, like, Welding these big like wheels that are attached to cranes that are like I think the <laughs> mini game potential. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of potential uh, for that stuff. It's pretty rad to, yep. to keep those objects together. So you can see like I just want to make this area kind of moody, so I made like effects emitters of steam and smoke along the mm -hmm. way, and then uh, so this is kind of the last area we'll show you is um, so this is kind of simple scripting thing that yeah, I actually did, it's so. perfect time actually from Waypoint yeah. uh, Cam Ferg wants to know. What new scripting things can we do in Forge? So we've started a, a basically a new scripting system where you can send a, objects can send events and messages to each mm -hmm. other, and then they can basically respond to those and perform an action. So they're conditions and actions essentially. And so like on this this little terminal here, it has uh, on a, on interaction set the power to Zulu, which is one of our power channels. And you can just toggle it back and forth, and and then the door here watches for. Uh, oops, that's, that's the wrong piece. The I selected the wrong piece. Where's the door? There it is. It's in there. Um, on, on, it's kind of hard to see here. On power state, Zulu, on, on move, move up. It moves, so it moves itself up. Right. And then on off, it goes, moves itself back to where it came from. So this is like, this is the start to like, I'm obsessed with scripting. I think it's the way that people can really change uh, the, the expectations of a level and yeah, map. Yeah, and so yeah, this sure. is something we're going to go crazy with as we keep building and wow. do a lot more with it. Oh, yeah. So I mean, it's pretty simple right now, but and there's a lot of, but it's pretty powerful even with just what's there. Yeah, yeah we even saw people doing incredible stuff. I think it was Halo 4's extraction where they would wait for an extraction point to be extracted so that the extraction art objects would release and a new part <laughs> of the map would open, right? But yeah. now people can just do all that. We want to try to get, I mean, I love the Rube Goldberg stuff and we want that stuff as well. I mean, I guess we really want everything, but. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, that's my designer nature. But um, we want to make it so a lot of it's just easier to do, right? Yeah. Instead of having to set up these crazy machines, it's just mm -hmm. letting you build them and do them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, and then interiors were a big pain in the butt before, and so we actually have real lighting now. And so, like, this is actually a light in the room. And you can see, like, it has a nice fall off. And when I bake the light, so it kind of loses and gains shadows, it gets into the corner. And there's a ton of parameters on them to really control how they behave. So as I go into the next room here, this one's more strobing and flashing, a lot moodier. Feels like, you know, a classic uh, horror film. Horror, yeah. horror <laughs> Sci fi horror. Yeah. So you can make, bake this into your level. Or if you really want to get a little crazier, you can start playing with the gobos, wow. which projects textures down. Right. Um, and so, you know, you could have the crazy, like, sci fi room, which if I walk over in here, like, it will start projecting and casting on my gear and yep. stuff. Oh, sweet. Or, you know, you could have your pulsing nebula. I don't know why you would have that, but you could totally have that. I and they're all you just, have that? These are all just little objects. And those are all just lights that are placed. Yeah, yeah, like, even that one has just, you know, that has to have the, uh, it has the, um, why am I forgetting what that's called right now? The lens flare. Oh, on lens it. You know, flare, you gotta have yeah. a lens flare and stuff like that. And there's tons of different options for lens flares. Yep. You can, you have individual light control over lens flares, so you can make each light behave differently with like the lens flare. Like in, in this room, stuff. I kind of went nuts with it. So like, if you're making a William Rieflin movie, like Only God Forgives or something, you could you know. Or J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams, you could yeah. do this. And yeah, so like, there's there's the Abrams <laughs> there's the, kind of style. There's the Abrams lens flare. Uh, just full lens flare max. <laughs> and these are like these are actually just objects that we have that so that you can set dress with them as well, mm -hmm. but then they feel kind of more grounded in yep. your environment. So you can use like the invisible ones here to really just kind of light your levels yep. like a lighter would do. But these really kind of make it more natural and organic. And, and then you can, again, change the gobos, and we have different types of effects and stuff on them. Or you can play with all the 128 colors on them. Um, you know, add different, like that one kind of strobes and pulses. Mm -hmm. And then that one's, that's like, we call that black light color, because that's like the actual right. color. It's kind of like your floodlight yeah. outdoor industry. Yeah. Like floodlight. But yeah, so it's, it's just, again, just there's just, Forge has a tons of different ways to yeah. personalize everything. It does, so, man. Absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Cool, cool, absolutely. I think uh, I'm taking a look at my list, and I think we... Oh, I got one more. Do you? One more Twitter question. Okay, okay. go ahead. Yeah, Before we head out, I'm still just kind of soaking everything in, honestly. <laughs> yeah, right I mean, now. it's a lot. Like, and that is, like, in the best possible way. Like, my mind's just kind of blown right now. And what's also crazy is that, I mean, there's so many more controls, things, oh, yeah. objects that oh, we yeah. didn't even look at. This today. is barely scratching the surface. That's we haven't talked yeah. about, like, it's wind incredible. and fog and clouds, and uh, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah. There's so many things, um, and... I can't wait to see what people are making like next month, the month after, six months down the road. Yeah, I, mean, I we, think people are going to continue to just find new things. Yeah, I mean, and surprise us, which yeah. is cool. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. I think we on the community team, we already have kind of setting up, working with uh, people here to be on the lookout for best community content, working with every community out there, including uh, the top Forge communities, on finding the best content. How do we surface it up? How do we make sure everyone can grab it? Uh, through file browser, in-game, and other ways, even matchmaking as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, yeah, I mean, you guys have built such awesome stuff, and we can't wait to use it. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. just want to see what people do with it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, quick question from Twitter from Forge Haven. Thank you for your question. Uh, we touched on this, I think, briefly. Uh, we know how Timmy the Whale came about, and this week's Cannon Fodder has his, his fiction breakdown of him in the Halo world. Yes, indeed. Uh, what's the story behind Olive the Pig? <laughs> and Tom, you were mentioning yeah. earlier, there is a real life Olive yes, the Pig. Yes, we actually got her Saturday. We have an Olive in our family. Uh, we have a little piglet, and we love her, and like, I don't know, she's just like the most beautiful thing. And, and you have your pig cam. I have a, at work, I've, I actually set up a baby monitor yeah. in, her, in her pen so that we could sit and watch her, and like everybody will come by the desk and just kind of watch her move around. It's adorable. And like, so I was like, as Forge lead, I demand <laughs> that we put a pig in the game. And then we wanted this idea of like pigs versus whales, and we were kind of mocking that stuff. I'm having oh, yeah. fun with we'll, it. So. Yeah, we'll have to maybe one day release that, the piggies versus whales. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> art was lots of sparks in the, the eyeballs. The key for art, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's, I mean, awesome. we kind of like Forge. We like to think of our. I mean, we're a bit of like the goofball team. We kind of want that mentality. Mm -hmm. Like, we're team fun in our own minds, maybe. <laughs> right. So uh, we want to just keep kind of enhancing that and like oh, yeah. put fun stuff like that for people to find goof off with. So yeah, yep. I think people are gonna love it. I think I mean, even uh, equally lovable is the fact that there's much more to come for Forge. Right? Like this isn't oh, a single drop. This right? is only the beginning. We have a lot of plans for what we want to do with Forge and where we want to take it. And that's even before the community gets their hands on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, once we once it gets released, we'll start watching to see what they want. And we know some of what they want from the people that we talk to. Um, but we've already got plans, like, moving forward from new assets to new, just fixing features or, or enhancing features and cleaning yep. things up or, like, right. new things that we want to help, again, make people build faster, build better. Yeah. Right. So. Awesome. Hey, I mean, I speak on behalf of everyone here watching, Jay and myself included. Um, you guys have spent years building this. We can't wait to get our hands on it. Yep. Uh, I know everyone watching can't wait to get our hands on it. So we can't thank you enough for 
uh, the amazing feature set and also joining us today. It's uh, time. Two streams in a row. Two streams. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like we'll, it. Hopefully we'll see you we'll guys again. We'll you show guys. off all the new stuff next time. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah, I think, awesome. uh, I think we just had, had that last question. We did. Yeah, cool. we did. So we're going to go ahead and move into our next multiplayer map showcase. But I got to say, Jay, I am so damn excited about Forge. I don't uh, even know what to like. 